Hi students, today we will be talking about the different types of weaves that are done. Okay, so let us talk about the different types of weaves. See, uh, the fabric, whichever fabric that you wear or you see as curtains or bed sheets, they all have different kinds of weaves. Some are plain, some are twill, some are satin, some are red rib weaves. So, today we will be talking about these different kinds of weaves. Come on. So, now first of all, let us talk about the plain weaves. The simplest form of weaves that you must have seen are the plain weaves in which the warp thread goes one above one above the weft thread and one under the weft thread okay so it's like one two one two above under above under similarly uh, we can say that it is the simplest form of weave it is also known as calico or we can call it a tabby weave as well calico or tabby weave if the question comes that calico or tabby weaves are forms of so you will write the answer they are forms of plain weaves okay so basically it is an alternate interlacing between the warp and the weft threads it is the most inexpensive or we can say that it is the cheapest and the most durable kind of weaves all right it has stripes checks and plaids which are usually woven on this kind of a fabric and Generally, the fabric used over here is the muslin fabric, print cloth or cheese cloth, jingham, lawn, organdy or chiffon or china silk basically, which is woven in the sim simple plain weave. Okay. So, this is the plain weave. There are two variations of the plain weaves. First is the rib weave. In this, <clears throat> the a rib kind is formed in between the two weaves. There is a rib a rib a kind of a rib that is projected upwards between the two weaves the filling yarns are larger in diameter than the warp yarns okay and a rib warp a rib weave produces fabrics in which fewer yarns per centimeters are visible on the surface so over here you can see these are the ribs which are being produced over here the filling yarns are larger in diameter than the warp yarns and this forms the rib weave then we have the mat weave uh -huh. then we have the mat weave the second form uh, of a plain weave is the mat weave or the basket weave uh, just like the way that a basket is made it is woven are the same method in which the basket weave is formed now two or more yarns are used over here as the warp yarns and two or more yarns are used as the weft yarns or the filling yarns and they produce an effect which gives the form of a basket weave okay something like this and uh, there are a lot a lot a lot of uh, I mean, uh, a lot of uh, materials available in which you can see that the basket weave is there okay next we come to the twill weave now what is a twill weave basically a twill weave has a diagonal line you can see a diagonal line over here which is there because of the filling yarns next we come to the twill weave and as you can see in the twill weave there's a diagonal line and this diagonal line is there on the face of the fabric and if you invert the fabric that is on the back of the fabric also there is a diagonal line and this diagonal line varies from a degree of somewhere around 14 degrees to 75 degrees it can vary now these twill weave fabrics are very strong fabrics <coughs> and there are very durable fabrics and what we can see is that the warp yarn goes over two filling yarns over here two filling yarns are used like over here two filling yarns are used and the warp yarn is going over two filling yarns to form a diagonal line example of twill weave you should remember this that the example of twill weave is denim gabardine jeans that you wear the jeans that you wear if you look at it properly it will have a twill weave so it's denim gabardine jeans tweeds and drill this weave is very expensive and it soils less so you can wear it for a longer duration okay so jeans is expensive but you can wear it thrice or four times before you need to wash it 
okay next we come to the satin weave if you've seen the satin weave if you've seen a satin ribbon you will understand what a satin weave is in this type of weave there is a glossy surface on the front and the back is often very dull if you see the satin ribbon on the upper side you will find a very glossy surface and the dull will be very uh, the back will be very dull and it has four or more either filling yarns or warp yarns which float over each other so in this case see the warp yarns are floating over four or more filling yarns so it's like one filling yarn and four wait huh it's like three or four weft yarns over which one warp yarn goes like this and again one filling yarn on top and then again the warp yarns are floating upon the weft yarns so three or four weft yarns are beneath it can be like this if i show you like this see three weft yarns are beneath and then one is on top and then again three weft yarns are beneath okay so yarns are floating either it is the warp yarns which are floating over the weft yarns or it is the weft yarns which are floating over the warp yarns the floats are missed at interfacing where the warp yarns lies on top of the weft and vice versa okay so uh, to have a smooth uh, surface and a dull back satin weave is generally used okay now let's talk about the sequence of weaving now yarn from the spinning department remember when we were talking about the processing of the natural fibers and the synthetic fibers the last step was spinning and yarn from the spinning departments it is cone winded first then it is the process of warping is done then it is sized sized means it is uh, stiffened by addition of any natural or chemical agent after that it is drawn in after that it is put on the weaving loom and then it is inspected the uh, fabric is inspected and folded and sent to wherever it is needed so this is basically the sequence of weaving now let's talk about each and every sequence so first was the yarn from the spinning department was coming to the cone winding so we talk about the cone winding okay what is cone winding cone winding is the process of transferring yarns from ring bobbins hanks cones etc into a convenient form of package containing many amounts of yarns many length of yarns so this is the cones on which the yarn is being wound okay it is the yarns from the big ring ribbons is uh, now being converted into cones it is being winded onto the cones why to make a single yarn package which is this is a single yarn package and this will be next going to the suitable operation wherever it wants to with it has to go after the cone winding is the process of warping now what happens in the warping process is that the weaver's beam is now prepared uh, if you remember the warp yarns for going so these are the warp yarns which are coming from all the cones and this is known as warping okay now warping from the warping this is going into the loom for the weaving process so this is the process of warping warping is used for fancy patterned fabrics where different colors of the weaves are being used in the warp or the weft threads okay so this this is the process of warping third is the sizing what did i tell you about sizing sizing is the application of adhesive coating in the warp threads before it is weaved so this basically is given to stiffen the fibers sizing can be natural chemical any kind of sizes sizing can be done on the fabric okay the warp yarns can withstand the stresses after the sizing is done and then they can be subjected to any kind of stretch otherwise they might break okay that is why they are the warp yarns are basically sized now looming like the way that i told you shedding the process of shedding picking beating up is the basic process of 
looming where the loom is there now after the weaver's beam is mounted on the loom i mean before the weaver's beam is mounted on the loom each end is threaded through that held remember that i told you which was there in the reed the eye this the kind of eye which was there on the needle something like this remember you had seen so this is known as looming in this basically is done to support it is a support system and then drafting is then the selected held frames are uh, uh, the, the held frames are selected and this is known as drafting and then drawing in takes place to pull the warp threads through the held eye of the held wire okay then denting means drawing the warp threads okay so this was the held eye that i was referring to now denting means drawing the warp threads uh, through the dent is known as denting and then tying in process is when the fabric is being produced the end of the warp from the uh, fabric is tied otherwise the fibers will come out so the end product is then tied and this process is known as tying in now of after the tying in process all the knots are pulled through the drop wires so over here you can see that this is the reed over here this is the reed this is the denting process that is drawing the warp threads through the dent okay then uh, tying in process takes place when the fabric has been produced and the end of the fabric the end of the fabric has to be tied okay and following the tying process all the knots are pulled through the drop wires and now the loom is ready for its operation okay so this is the process next we come to certain decorative weaves which are done for decorative purposes now one of them is the dobby weaves dobby weaves basically they are beautiful decorative weaves they may be dots they may be any kind of geometric designs they may be any kind of floral patterns which are weaved onto the fabric and it uses fine yarn or coarse yarn or fluffy yarn to produce a variety of fabrics like crepe or metal as okay 